If you know anything about trains, then you've probably heard of the Railjet. It's a train that many say is the best in Europe, thanks to its luxurious interior. But today I'm going to be riding in economy class, to see if this often praised train is any good when travelling with the cheapest tickets. We'll be riding at 230km an hour today, as we check out all parts of the experience, including the fantastic dining options. So join me for a ride into the Alps on the famous Railjet. Welcome to Wien Hauptbahnhof, the main station here in Austria's capital city. This modern construction opened in late 2012, and nowadays is home to almost all long-distance services in the city of Vienna. Let's make our way inside for a brief look around before we board our railjet today. Wien Hauptbahnhof is a very spacious and impressive station, with plenty of facilities for the modern traveller. On both levels of the main entrance hall, you can find a plentiful selection of eateries. Next to this in the underpass, you can find two levels of shops, in what is referred to as the Bahnhof City Complex. There's a supermarket downstairs, but I plan to visit the onboard restaurant today. Stay tuned to see how that goes. Anyway, my train today will be number RJ640, the 1055 to Salzburg Hauptbahnhof. As you can see, I don't have a lot of time today, so let's head over to platform 8. Wien Hauptbahnhof has 12 platforms for departing passenger trains, with two of these being located beneath ground. The rest of these are located above the concourse, beneath the rather impressive modern station roof. It looks like my train is already waiting, but before we board, let's take a quick look at what a railjet actually is. The railjet is the name given to a fleet of 60 trains operated by Österreichische Bundesbahnen, or to keep it simple, UBB, the Austrian Railways. Any given train is formed of seven carriages, hauled by a high-speed Siemens Eurosprinter locomotive, commonly known as a Taurus. This goes against the European tradition of using pointy-nosed units, like this one, but does fit in nicely with UBB's fleet of locomotives, and results in increased flexibility. Now let's get back to the train. I have a reserved seat today, located in coach 24. This is one of the economy class carriages, also known as second class. Seats are in a 2 plus 2 layout, with various tables available too. Today I'll be travelling in seat 91, a forward facing seat at a window. We'll take a look at these seats here in economy class a little bit later on, but first, here's the route for the journey. Today we'll be heading west along Austria's Westbahn route, running on the high-speed line through the major cities of St. Pölten and Linz, before then running on the slower tracks into Salzburg. The trip is scheduled to take 2 hours and 53 minutes to cover the 311 kilometers, or about 193 miles. We depart on time, at 10.55, to begin our journey over to Salzburg. As we leave Wien Hauptbahnhof, there's a great opportunity to compare the modern infrastructure of the railway with the classic Viennese architecture. However, this is interrupted with our first stop, but trust me, the journey does get a lot more interesting soon. Wien Meidling serves as a secondary station in Vienna, but despite this status, it remains as one of the country's busiest transport hubs. After a few tunnels, we're out on the main line, accelerating up to our top speed of 230 km an hour. There's a lot to check out on today's journey, from the restaurant, carriage and dining options, right the way to business class, and we'll get to that later on. But first, let's take a look at the seat here in economy class. These seats have an interesting colour scheme, featuring off-brown and beige. It's certainly not my first choice of colour, but the railjet actually pulls off this look nicely. Now for comfort, I found these economy class seats really comfortable, with a lot of padding and great ergonomic support. There's also a very large winged headrest too, accompanied by a smart anti-macassar. All seats have adjustable armrests as you'd expect, but these were rather hard. As for legroom, it was actually very good, definitely better than any jet aircraft I've been on. The seat in front has a folding seat back table. This features a cup holder and a sliding bracket. Whilst the table may appear small, this sliding bracket means you should be able to fit a laptop on it. Beneath the table you can find a small storage net, ideal for books or leaflets. For larger items, there's a well-sized overhead luggage rack. But for heavier items, you may want to use the space between and beneath seats. Finally, 
various luggage stacks can be found dotted around the garage. Beneath the seat in front, there's a small bin. Beneath each pair of seats, there's also a single European power socket. After around 15 minutes, we arrive into our first station outside of Vienna. This is Tulnefeld. Following a brief stop, we continue our journey west, running parallel to these slower tracks for freight trains and regional services. Freight is a big thing on the rails in this part of Europe, with all sorts of private companies getting involved. This train is operated by Röthalbahn Cargo, a German company based between Köln and Aachen. We continue to run through the relaxing scenery of northern Austria, closely following the river Danube, even running just a few meters away from it in some places, such as Ibs an der Donau. Our next station is Amstetten Nö, the Nö of course standing for Niederösterreich, the region that the town is in. Most long distance travellers on this route won't stop at stations like Amstetten as they use the faster railjet express services, which make limited stops. However, there are various trips which are slower and run with additional stops, such as Amstetten. After Amstetten, the journey continues at 200 km an hour. It certainly is a smooth and comfortable ride on these railjet trains. Next up is Linz, which is Austria's third largest city. As well as being a major destination in the country, the station is also a major hub, serving all railjet trains on the route to Salzburg and beyond, as well as German ICE trains to Frankfurt. There's also a frequent connection to Prague, and countless regional services around the area. From here, our journey slows down as we move away from dedicated high-speed lines to winding railway routes through the northeastern extremities of the Alps. Fifteen minutes later, we arrive into Wels Hauptbahnhof. It's coming up to one o'clock now, so let's head down to the restaurant car for lunch. The restaurant car is located between first class and economy class, in coach 25. It's great to see such a facility on a high speed train, as many other designs in Europe have done away with the restaurant car. With its extra large windows, this is a fantastic place to view the scenery while digging into a local dish. I often hear people saying the restaurant car on the railjet isn't very good, but personally I think the design is okay. A menu can be found at your seat too, and there's a great selection of tasty food and drink. I went for the Spinat Spätzler mit Rauchkäsesauce and a local beer. This dish was Austrian style pasta and spinach in a smoked cheese sauce. I really enjoyed this meal, and it's fast become an onboard favourite of mine. These two items were on a promotional offer, meaning I paid just 11 euros 30 for my meal, and I think this was a good deal. Anyway, after a few more minutes of observing the hills of northern Austria, I paid and left the restaurant carriage to have a look around the rest of the train. We'll take a sneaky look at the luxurious business class soon, but first, the toilets. Each carriage has at least one modern vacuum toilet, and these were kept in good condition. There's a soap dispenser, and the water was working fine. Finally, there's a hand dryer too. The rear two coaches of the train feature first class and business class. First class is in a 2 plus 1 seating layout, with comfortable reclining seats. However, business class is a massive step above this, featuring incredible 1 plus 1 recliners. You can even find a few semi-compartments seating four passengers. This is a fantastic product, and if you want a full video on this luxurious experience, then let me know in the comments. Anyway, our journey continues to Salzburg, which by now will be our next stop. On the last stretch of the journey, you can catch a glimpse of the Wallasee. The lake is a focal point of two nearby campsites, with swimming and hiking being popular activities in the area. So now on to how much I paid for the journey, and believe me, this one was a bargain. For this trip, I booked a fixed ticket just a few days in advance, and this cost me just €24.90. Euros I also paid an additional €3 Euros to reserve a seat. Overall, I think this is fantastic value for money, but it gets better. This was actually a through booking from Bratislava in Slovakia, 
so not only did I ride on the railjet for a great price, but my ride from Slovakia was included too. Ladies and gentlemen, you should be arriving at Salzburg main station. We're soon in the city of Salzburg and on the approach to the fantastic Salzburg Hauptbahnhof. My journey on the railjet today was a thoroughly enjoyable trip, and whilst the trains are not as fast as some other high-speed trains and the interior is missing some features such as reclining seats and carpet, the railjet is a fantastic all-round train. Economy class is a great option that still lives up to the train's high standards at a lower cost. And as we arrive into Salzburg, you can see the iconic colourful containers on the building at the north side of the station. Arrival into Salzburg Hauptbahnhof is on time at 13.48. So there we have it, the Railjet Economy Class experience. But what do you think of the Railjet? Have you been on this famous train? As always, let me know in the comments and for a look at this train's competition, the Double Deck Festbahn units, then click up here now. <laughs>